Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We're taking a look at this loading screen today on FIFA Ultimate Team, talking about it and what is it telling us and what it is informing us about Team of the Season. And I also want to just kind of talk about Team of the Season most consistent and what loading screens we could see in the next couple of days and just stuff that we saw today on the market. So it's kind of like a market talk and discussing the loading screen kind of like all in one video. We're just going to go through it all today and go over it. So talking about this loading screen, when EA dropped it today, and I'm actually not gonna show you it on the console, like I've got this little picture set up to throw on the screen because right now my menu lag inside of the menus is un unbelievable. It's just awful for whatever reason. Um, I It's been this way the past two days, it's been really annoying. But um, this is the loading screen that we got today and it shows us all of the leagues. And we first got it today at 6 p.m. UK, they dropped this loading screen. And all that we saw on it was the Bundesliga, Liga Nos. Basically, the, the top row up there is all that we saw. And then we saw empty open boxes below that. Every hour after 6 p.m. UK, so at 7, 8, and 9 p.m., they updated to show the rest of the leagues that were going to be included in Team of the Season. This is really cool. Like, EA, I know this. we kind of laugh at, like, loading screens as content nowadays. Um, but this is kind of cool, in my opinion, because... They're telling us some useful information here that we're getting two new leagues in team of the season that we really haven't gotten in a while. At least we didn't get last year. We're getting a champion or a Chinese league team of the season, a full squad or, you know, at least a set of players from Chinese Super League and then also the MLS. So those are the two new leagues this year. So that means theoretically that uh, since there are now 16 different squads that should come out for team of the season this entire year the team of the season is actually going to be uh two or two weeks longer no a week longer it's gonna be a week longer if they do the same way as they did before because last year we had 14 different squads with 12 different leagues uh and then this year we have 16 different squads with 14 different leagues because the uh the two that are not league based are the community and the ultimate I guess you could count rest of world in there too, but um, the community and the the, ult the ultimate tots is basically just a redo of tots players that have already been in the game. So team of the season is going to be actually longer this year if they do it the same way they've done it in the years past. Uh, like one week, they put out two different squads. Um, and, you know, when I started to look at this, I thought, you know, Liga Nos and Bundesliga were together last year. If you go back and you look... Uh, in on Footbin or you know back in last year FIFA 19 it kind of groups together the teams that were out at the same time last year we had Bundesliga and Liga Nos uh, out at the same exact time uh, and they're together now this year on the um, on this loading screen that we got today they're they together so last year Liga Nos we had a full side of 11 we didn't have a bench I would expect that to be uh, the way that it goes for a lot of these squads um, this year, probably the same thing for the Chinese Super League, same thing for the MLS, possibly Eredivisie, uh, and rest of world is what we'll get just 11 sets of 11 for those, for those leagues and not a full, uh, 23, like we'll get for the community or most consistent, but, uh, regardless, it's cool to get two more leagues for team this season. We're starting earlier. So that makes sense why EA might want to stretch it out a little bit more and, um, put a couple extra leagues in there. Um, and again, we, some people were theorizing today what these leagues mean. I think this just means what leagues are in team this season. Some guys thought that this was going to be a um, the makeup of all the different leagues with the players that were included in most consistent. But I don't think that's true at all because 16 different leagues for team this season most consistent. Uh, last year, we only had nine leagues. And you know there's going to be multiple Prem players, multiple La Liga and Bundesliga in team this season most consistent. So... I don't think that loading screen today was anything to do with that. I literally just think the loading screen today was telling us which leagues we're actually going to be getting during team of the season. Now, it doesn't tell us what order we're going to get them in or if, you know, the pairings that sit right beside each other, uh, like the guys that are right next to each other, if we look, they look pretty believable, right? Ultimate Tots in uh, Chinese Super League, not bad. Super League and Prem, okay. That's like a top league and a lower league. But then we have Community Tots, matched up with La Liga Santander. That seems a bit interesting. I don't know if that's, if they would drop that this weekend, that would be crazy. Um, that'd be a pretty crazy combination. But then 
The other side of the coin is if we got rest of world and air divisia at the same time, that'd be pretty dead as well as Latin America tots with Saudi, the Saudi league, that'd be a little bit less than desired too. So I honestly think we were talking about this in the stream tonight uh, on Twitch is I think what they're going to do is they'll pick one from the right side and one from the left side, and that's how they're going to do it. And somehow all of them will come together and we'll probably have still a main league and a lesser league. Uh, during team of the season, kind of like normal. Uh, but again, since we have the extra league this year, it feels like to me, we only have five like major leagues, right? With We have Ligue 1, Bundesliga, Serie A, the Prem, who am I forgetting? La Liga Santander, right? So that's the five main leagues. Then we have Ultimate Tots for six. Uh, that'd be like the next hype one. And then maybe Latin America could be somewhat hype depending on who they boost uh, for that. But I feel like that is going to be um, Economy Bowl 2.0, to be honest with you. Like, it's probably going to be some of the same players. Anyway, um, I'm curious to see how these, how they make this up, how they do it. Uh, and maybe they have something totally different planned and, and then something else they're going to be doing. But that's what we think is going to be happening with this loading screen and with this coming out today on foot. What can we expect in from loading screens uh, from here on out in FIFA for the next couple of days? I would expect them to maybe start to tease uh, like the actual loading screen for what's going to be coming next. And now my controller is dead. That's cool. Nice. There we go. I would maybe expect them to um, to maybe kind of show us, start leaking or not leaking, but start showing some of the statistics, start showing some of the nationalities of players that are actually going to make it into the community or AKA most consistent team of the season. I feel like that's what they're going to be showing us next on the loading screens. Uh, I feel like we're, they've told us what leagues we're getting and I feel like we're going to move on from there. So you can obviously see my menus are being super duper slow, uh, but talking about most consistent tots, right? I want to look at the prediction that Foothead has. Uh, and this is interesting to me. I don't know if Foothead has the information on who voted. I would assume that they might, right? You know what I'm saying? Like I would assume that they might be the ones that are somehow reporting this information to FIFA. Uh, so this is their prediction, Community Tots prediction. I don't know if this is based off of um, uh, the fan vote at all. It doesn't say anything in a lot of these, in these uh, the write-up about the fan vote. Um, but if you look in here, uh, this looks like some sort of prediction that looks pretty reasonable um, based on the rules and for the voting. Uh, this could be our most consistent team of the season, which honestly doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look too bad in here. Uh, and I feel like this is pretty average. I feel like some of the players on the bench could change. Uh, like maybe Pepe doesn't get in. Maybe Gulashi doesn't get in. And maybe some of the other lower tier guys get in that weren't in a, a major league. Because if you look at this prediction, there's a lot of... How many Prem guys? One, two, three, four, five. There's no way. Five Prem guys on the bench. What? All the all the Prem guys are on the bench in the squad. Leno, Gomez, Zaha, Fernandinho, and Anderson. Interesting. Anyways, um, this looks to me like what could really be most consistent team of the season. And how hyped does this look to you? It doesn't look bad, right? Uh, Courtois is kind of cool. Trippier is going to be an interesting card for Lynx. Uh, Julian Brandt's going to be a pretty good card. Like more on a, a usable, like um, affordable type range. Tiago looks usable with the 80 pace. Grimaldo is going to be cool. Um, and then, you know, Joe Gomez is probably going to be the most hype one, to be honest. Felipe Anderson, Joe Gomez, Zaha, um, possibly is Musa Dembele as well. But the stuff that I've been hearing, I don't know if this is true or not. This is what I've been hearing kind of rumblings around the community, I guess you could say, is that they're going to be doing weak foot and skill move upgrades for team of the season as well. That's some stuff that I heard today. I saw people talking about it on Twitter. I don't know how accurate that is or how true that is. But that would take all of this team of the season to another level if they did that today. That'd be crazy, to be honest, if they did that. And the first thing I think about with weak foot and skill move upgrade is, let's say a guy like Salah gets in team of the season and they boost him to a five-star weak foot. Uh, that's going to make a guy like uh, St. Maximin go down a lot in price because a Salah with a five-star weak foot with his statistics is just as meta, if not more meta, than St. Maximin is, just from a statistic standpoint. Imagine uh, Tat Salah, maybe 96 or 97 rated, maxed out pace, 
uh, probably maxed out finishing with like a plus three or plus four boost. This card would be incredible with a five star weak foot. And if they do that during team of the season, that's going to hurt some of the foot birthdays with with cards that have positions where a tots card gets a skill move a weak foot upgrade in that same position does that make sense like if salah right wing in the prem uh saint maximin right wing in the prem so a substitute good saint maximin has a lot of hype right now so if there was something like that to happen i do think you would see some drop in his price do i want you to go sell this card no I, i'm not saying this is a reason to panic or a reason to uh go and sell some of these cards but I would just say be careful because that opportunity is there for a Salah to maybe come out because a Salah, I know this is five star, five star, but the skill moves, uh, the weak foot is the most important thing. And I think that um, Salah with the five star weak foot would become a little bit more meta, at least close to meta. Uh, and a lot, a lot of people that are using the same maximum, like this is the best right mid that's playable in this version of FIFA in the state of this game and the way this game is made with the, you need the five star weak foot. Uh, if Salah would come out, then there'd be some competition in that position. And you see him go down. So that's just a thought that I had. Um, let's say they put out a guy like Julian Brandt. Maybe they give him, I don't know what he's got off the bat, uh, for a card with skill moves and weak foot. Uh, I guess I can check him here in game, but Julian Brandt, what does he have? Because this could be like somebody who hurts Royce. I guess. Okay, so he's already, he's already four star, four star. A five star weak foot would be cool. I don't even think Royce has a five star weak foot, uh, to be honest. But I'm just, again, this is just purely theoretical. We don't know if it's going to happen or not. That's just, okay, so they're both four star, four star. But that's just purely theoretical at this point, And we'll see what happens when it actually comes out, if that's true or not. But that's something to take note of and, and take condition of and just, you know, realize that if that does come, that will make some foot birthdays a lot less unique than they are right now in this game. Because if they upgrade the skill move and weak foot of more cards, that's going to make foot birthdays a little bit less unique. We also got this SBC today, which uh, I was I was pumped about this SBC when I first saw it. And then I realized that it requires an inform. If they would have just made this 83 rated, keep the 80 chem. I know it's a pain in the butt, but do 83 rated squad with 80 chem and no inform. This SBC is costing you around like 15, 20,000 coins, right? maybe 25k. And right now, the cheapest play, the cheapest 87s in the game are 27, 28,000 coins. According to Footbin, this SBC is 35k. Uh, again, I think this is cool. They're giving this guy a player moments because he won the stay and play cup, which was EA's big event this week or last week, which is cool. Um, but this is not really that usable of a card and it's an 87 rated for 35k with no links. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not a fan of this SBC. I wish they would have just made it 83 without an inform. Cause then you could have done it for like a discard 87. Uh, but if you want to do this card just to try it out and then, you know, pay five, 10 K extra for an 87 rated that you'll throw into an SBC at some point, go for it, I guess, if you want to, but that was basically our content today. Again, it's kind of funny how the loading screens, uh, are basically our content now, at least midweek. I would expect another maybe SBC or two at some point this week. Not sure what it would be, but some point, some SBC, they're, they're trying to keep fodder up a little bit, it seems. Fodder is still high, in my opinion, too. If we take a peek over here on Footbin, some of these cards need to drop more, in my opinion, before they're investable. 86 is, again, I've been shouting 15,000 coins for these cards. I think it could happen on uh, Friday or Saturday of this week with lightning rounds, with people opening up safe packs because it's the start of team of the season. I think you could see these cards get down to 15k at that point without any new SBCs coming out. That'd be a key. So I hope they don't put anything out that will affect the high rated fodder because I want to see these guys get low and have a nice little entrance point for us before they start going up and up and up during team of the season with all sorts of SBCs coming out and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, that's my thought on the fodder right now. Trading wise on the market right now, there are people that are buying cards. Uh, since there's people at home, there's no content and stuff to do on this game. People are buying cards. I bought both of these Salas today for right around a million coins, a million coins flat and 999 for the other one. Both of them, I got around 20,000 coins of profit on after tax. And then all of these other cards average from, you know, seven to 8K all the way up to like 20K a card after tax. So it's some really, really nice deals. Um, on some of these, which is fun. 
Uh, open bids and just fluctuation trading is how I'm making some coins. I made all these coins today looking at the market for probably an hour and a half. So an hour and a half, I probably made uh, you know, 50K from these two alone and then probably an average of 10K a card for the rest of these. So probably somewhere around like 150-ish K somewhere in there uh, for the day, which is a really solid day of making coins in a market time like this where it's a bit risky to trade. So just find some rare cards. You don't have to find the same ones as these. You can tell. I've been looking at a lot of cards in my transfer targets, uh, some informs, some winner refreshes, future stars, team of the year nominees. Just look at some cards that not a lot of other people are looking at, man, right? Look at a lot of those cards. That price, oh, that's an unreal price. See, this is why bids are OP, man. This Gareth Bale sells for 560, 570,000 coins. This guy just got on bid for 500 because I was not paying attention. 291 for Martinelli is not bad. This Florenzi, I should have bought that at 145 because, again, it went through at 160. But during the day, this guy sells for 160. So there are people that are buying cards. Uh, so you can definitely make some coins on the market by fluctuating, fluctuation trading with some of these higher rated and just out of packs cards. And open bids are your, are your great friend. Today is Wednesday, right? And we're getting closer to the, the weekend league flipping time frame. And people think the market's going to go up on Thursday. If we don't have any announcement from EA and what they're going to do with weekend league rewards by then, um, then I still think you'll see it go up a little bit just because it's team of the season and people are going to be on foot uh, and people are going to end up playing. I think we might see more of a market rise on Friday night, though, instead of seeing most of it today on Thursday. Because uh, if we go in and look at the foot champions rewards, they have not actually updated the um, schedule yet for the second week of foot champs. This is the rewards for this week. So it looks like we're not getting most consistent tots uh, in rewards for this next set of rewards. But then for whatever is coming next, hopefully Premier League, hopefully they update this schedule on Friday or maybe even Thursday and tell us, hey, for this next week, we're going to have team of the seasons in red picks and in your elite packs. And then that is where we will be good to go and set to be looking for a nice rise in the market on cards like that. And across the game on the higher tier, more meta cards in this game. Because again, uh, why does it affect most of the high tier cards when they put those cards into the elite picks? Think about the people that are getting elite in the weekend league, right? Those are the hardcores, the hardcore players of this game that spend a lot more money than the average Joe does most of the time, or just spends a lot more time on this game, right? And they probably just have more coins from spending more time on the game. Um, so they're getting even more coins and they're going to go out and splash those on more higher tier players just because they can afford them. Even if somebody who has 100K coins gets elite, finishes elite, uh, and then makes three to four mil from rewards, instead of playing with like um, Inform Ben Yedder in their team, or maybe even like Gold Ben Yedder, they're going to be able to go out and buy like the um, the Shapeshifter Ben Yedder, right? And you have multiple people that go and do they go and buy these cards that are out of packs that have no extra supply and that pushes their price up because there's less supply, the demand rises and the price goes higher as well. So that's why we were talking about this inflation on the market with the weekend league rewards, team of the season rewards. So again, don't feel scared to trade, right? Don't feel scared to try to trade and, and flip cards. If you want to make some buys today for Thursday flipping, be my guest. Uh, just look at flipping graphs and find cards uh, that are lower. This Conte was 120,000 coins this weekend. He's 128, so he's up 8K already. I looked at Sun, um, I think in yesterday's video, and he was like 108. Looks like he's around the same price right now. This guy was 120 last weekend. He was 100K flat uh, during the sell-off on the weekend. Uh, and of course, any out-of-packs cards, right? Like I was looking at KDB. All these guys that are on my transfer list, I would expect to see a little bit of an uptick at rewards just because they're rare cards, right? And some people are still wanting, like waiting to buy. Some people have been told to buy their teams today on, on Wednesday. So you might see a bit of a rise today on the market on Wednesday of people that go in and buy some stuff. So if you're trying to flip some cards, um, you might actually see a decent rise today and that could be profitable or you could try to hold through rewards and sell them. A little bit later but i just wanted to talk about the market today talk about this loading screen and uh just kind of chat about this because this is really nice that they give us like a schedule and it, they tell us the leagues that are coming out which kind of helps us prepare get ahead 
and make us wish that we maybe would have done um, the flashback Miranda SBC and the flashback Hulk SBC. Unless they get team of the seasons, then it's a big, you know, kind of like slap in the face from EA. Ha, you wasted, you know, 350k on those SBCs combined. And now they have Tots cards. So we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video today. Smash the thumbs up on it if you did. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Tots hype is here. It's going to be a great one. I'm ready for these next few weeks. Hopefully you enjoyed it again. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.